Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. OK, so today we'll be talking about qualitative research in conversion optimization. First of all, I'd like to start off by welcoming all of you. It's glad to see you here. Hello to the coffee line, everyone there. Uh, my name is Andra Boragan. I am uh, really passionate about conversion optimization. I have been doing this for the past three years. I don't see myself doing anything else. Uh, I am in charge of strategy at Marketizator. Um, to start off, I would like to just tell you a short story about myself. And uh, when I was a little kid, I would just drive my mother insane with all the stupid questions I would ask. Like every kid, I was just driven by the need to find out stuff. Why, why the sky is blue, everything, why it works, how it works. What I found out, actually, was that in life, nothing important has ever been discovered without proper exploration. We will talk today about qualitative research, how you can apply it to your website, to your business, and also I will take you through two case studies that we've done so that you can see the, the actual use in this. The average e-commerce conversion rate, as you probably know, is 2-3%. Which of you are happy with their e-commerce conversion rate on your site or your conversion rate overall? None of you. Excellent. Uh, the, if, if you're thinking that you have a good conversion rate or that it's all right, I think what you should actually be thinking about is where did everybody go? If you have 2-3%, you have 97-98% of your users that are just leaving the site. That's traffic wasted that you're bringing there. How can we do this? If, after this 15-minute presentation, I won't be long, you'll find out how you can actually get the most out of those 97% and not waste traffic. The way, the way we take advantage of these 97% is through conversion rate optimization. Conversion rate optimization is a complex process, it, but it does start with conversion research. We'll be talking today about qualitative research and more specifically about surveys, the way you can use them and apply them to your website. Surveys, actually, what they are, they give you the power to know. It's the power of asking the right questions. I'll, uh, how you call a doctor who treats your broken bone without an x-ray? I want all of you to think about the situation where you would go to the doctor with a broken bone, and he says, oh, thank you for coming. Let's perform surgery. He starts chopping off at your leg without any kind of x-rays. Well, that's what... That's what we do. We're doctors to the site, and we perform x-rays. Qualitative research is one of the best x-rays you can actually perform on your website. It shows you what the cause is, where it hurts. It helps you apply the treatment. Through surveys, like any good doctor, you need to talk to your patient. You need to find out what hurts and to see who they are, what they want, how they feel about your products and also what is driving their decisions. By finding the answers to all of these questions, you will, you will see that you have a much better insight and that you can actually talk to them properly in the right way. When, when should you do surveys and when can you actually do them? Before they get to your site to find out their purchase intentions, their reasons to buy, uh, during the visit and after the purchase. After the purchase, you can just find out satisfaction level, a net promoter score, type survey, and customer feedback. All of these stages are vital to, to your conversion optimization program, and they're vital to finding out what the problem is. On-site surveys, the ones we'll, uh, we'll approach today, actually, and the ones that the case studies are, uh, are about, they help you find out why they came to the site. So why they came to the site is, um, can, what are they looking for? Can, um, can they actually find their needs there? Have they found what they were after? Does your offer match their needs? And which barriers are stopping them? As any other website, you have obstacles that get in the way of their purchase. Find out which those are and address them. A very good uh, analogy for this is the persuasion slide. And we'll be focusing on, on the point from where they get nudged, so the gravity, angle, and friction. We'll, uh, we'll focus on each of these. Uh, a good um, 
a good way to see the power of one single question is actually asking what made them abandon the purchase. We asked this question to one of our clients and found out that an astonishing 74.5% were actually not buying because of high delivery charges. Not that the price of the product was too high as we might expect, but also that the high delivery charges. So this gives you information that you couldn't obtain in any other way. This leads us to our first case study, which is uh, for Market View Liquor. They're um, a top selling uh, wine shop. They're online and offline. They're based in New York City. What they actually wanted to do was to improve their product pages and to drive more traffic to it and improve the conversion rates there. What, why is the product page important? You might ask, if, if we look at your funnel, like a game of domino, you would see that you have traffic. The traffic lands on your homepage or landing page, depending on your campaigns. You want them to reach the category pages. From the category pages, you want them to use filters, narrow down their choices, and get to the product pages. If, if one, of, one piece of this game is missing, then you don't end to the final piece, which is the conversion. So we focused on the product pages. We ran on-site surveys exactly to find out why they're leaving the product page and why they're not buying. That uh, survey revealed pain points. The, those pain points developed testing hypotheses that we afterwards implemented. This was the on-site survey we used. We are sad to see you leave. Is there a specific reason? What we found out, most, most users, actually their issue there, was pricing, the pricing of the wines. And none of the answers that we had here, but another one that um, they were anxious about whether they can choose the right wine. So they didn't, their lack of knowledge in the wine domain blocked them. It was, uh, they had decision paralysis, which I'm sure you all know about. Uh, so we addressed the pricing issue with an on-exit overlay using the price filter. How much would they pay for a glass of wine? This re-engaged them on the site and also brought them to the product page as it narrowed down choices. So they wouldn't be in front of a million bottles of wine, just 50 bottles of wine that would integrate in their uh, price range. The anxiety issue about whether they would choose the right wine or not, we addressed by doing an A-B test on the product page. And the, so above this section, we introduced a recommendation section. This is where um, experts would just talk about, their, about the wines, how, what food they would be good with. So this helped the visitors actually understand if they would like the wine, if it's good for their fancy dinner they have with their friends. So this, together with on-site surveys, A-B testing, and web personalization, we managed to actually increase the add-to-car rate with 18.2%, increase the average order value with 40%, with a statistical significance of almost 100%, 99.9. This leads us to our second case study, which is for Avon, which I'm sure all the ladies in here know about, the, the men don't, but they're the largest direct seller in the beauty industry. They make over $10 billion in annual revenue. This is their website. They wanted to increase the performance of their makeup category. So this came from them, the, the optimization goal. Like, how do, you, how do you increase the performance? How do you know how to treat yourself? You investigate. We found out why the category was not performing well. How did we do this? Through qualitative and quantitative research. We, we had a deep dive into Google Analytics, saw what the issues were there. And we found out actually that what helped the, the visitors buy more on the product page was using the eye color filter. So, we combined this with running some surveys through our platform, through Marketizator, and we found out that their main anxiety was actually whether the makeup products will match their eye color. So to address this issue, we've added the help of an expert. Obviously, you want, if you're not sure what to do, the same as with optimization, ask an expert. We added, um, I'll just skip that. We added an expert through the on-site server. This is Roxana. It's the Avon makeup artist. She would just say, hi, can I help you answer this question? And I'll tell you what type of makeup is good for you. After the visitors would engage with Roxana, uh, she would just ask what the color of their eyes is. 
they would just select blue, green, brown, or black. After selecting this, the visitors would get recommended product personalizations. So, um, uh, also to re-engage them, in case they didn't engage with Roxana at the first step, we would also have an on-exit intent overlay that would bring them back on the site and also increase the list, the email list. Roxana would just say, hi, do you want to receive some professional makeup tips? Give me your email address, which I'm sure we all want to know more about. Also, to stay consistent, we kept Roxana on the product on the cart page. We, uh, based, on, based on the product they would add to the cart, so based on their eye color, the category they would add, we would just add some random information about their eye color, but it stayed consistent and it confirmed somehow that they made the right choice, actually. So, through web analytics, on-site surveys, A-B testing, and web personalization, all through our platform, we managed to increase engagement on the category pages, so on the specific category pages, with 111% more page views on the green eye color, 292 more page views on the brown eye color, and 73 more page views on the blue eye color. This is just engagement. This, together, led to an increase in KPIs of 43.6% add to car rate on those specific categories and products. The conversion rate almost doubled. It increased by 98.2%. Statistical significance of 100%. We were absolutely sure this was the right choice. Based on this experiment and the results, the next steps were just to extend the campaign on other categories and also deliver personalized experience on remarketing ads. So based on the right color and the category they would be in, we would just present the specific product that we know is great for their eye color. We know it would make their color pop. So this is actually, I, I find it magic. That's why I said it's, I'm passionate about this. I don't see myself doing anything else. If you have a 6% monthly increase, incremental increase in conversion rate, at the end of the year, after 12 months, you would have 90% increase in conversion rate. That's... That's 90% more conversions without paying one extra euro cent per, per traffic. We're, I'm not the only one passionate about this. Also, my entire team is. And uh, we're doing this for our customers such as Samsung. You can see the case study with the experiments we perform for them and how we help them increase conversions here on this, at this address. Also, Telecom, which is yours truly. You, they also have a case study here. And... In the end, overall, we help over 8,000 websites, self-managed or managed services, and we have over 3.5 tested billion visits per month. These are some of our other clients. You can look up our website and uh, see, see who we help some more. So we're, all together, we're the first integrated CRO platform in the world. We help you find out why through behavior insights, surveys, and analytics. We can help you test different messages and layout. This is through our A-B testing editor, which is very important for all of you, I'm sure, or most of you. It doesn't require any coding skills. So I have zero coding skills, but I can still perform an A-B test on your website. And we can help you segment the traffic to be relevant through web personalization. We have over 40 different criteria for segmentation, which all of you can find useful at one point in the, in the purchasing funnel. So I think with all this being said, it's your turn to, to explore. And we can also explore together. We have a booth there at 812. So thank you. And if you have any questions. Thank you, Andra. Any questions? So do you have any questions? If yes, I would uh, very likely give you the microphone. OK, so perhaps one from me. Uh, Andra. Uh, this is a very useful tool, very uh, precise. Uh, we, do you think it is uh, suitable for any kind of e-commerce business? I mean, the small one, medium one, as well as the big one. Are, does the small companies have enough data, enough circuit to use it? Yes, for sure. I mean, uh, you, can, you can definitely use it. Optimization should be done at any level no matter how, how big or, or small your website is. I mean, uh, if, if you don't have enough traffic for, for A-B testing, it, it might take six months to validate one experiment. You can always re-engage them through web personalization. You can get their email addresses through lead collectors you can do. 
and find out more and just before you increase the traffic to that, take advantage of what you have and learn more and then you can scale. I definitely recommend just testing small. I mean, starting and then increasing your efforts through, through this. But for sure we have clients that have 600 views a month and clients that have 60 million views a month. So you can, all of you can, can actually just fit in there and improve conversions. Okay, thank you. So are there any other questions? Okay, in that case, uh, Andra, I think you'll yes. be uh, thank you reachable. Thank you very much for attending. You'll be reachable all the time. <laughs> Applause, thank you.